of worship This is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name This is a house of healing So come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Yeah.
God, I believe you're working all things for our good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, give me your vision. God, I believe you're working all things for good. I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working all things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe you're working all things for good.
We believe that God is the good and eternal creator of all things, seen and unseen, and that he has spoken authoritatively to us through his written word. We believe that every single human being is made by God and for God and therefore is important to God, no exceptions. We also believe that every human being is sinful and broken, that even the best of us have deep-rooted evil in our hearts that comes out in all sorts of ugly ways in our actions, in our words, in our attitudes, no exceptions there either. We also believe that God was unwilling to let our sins have the final say over our eternity. And so he became a man in the person of Jesus Christ to save us and to open the eyes of our darkened hearts. We believe that Jesus didn't just perform miracles and love people and live a sinless life. And he didn't even just die on the cross, but actually three days later, he literally and physically rose from the dead to prove his power over sin and death and hell and to offer to every single person in this room eternal life and the forgiveness of sins. That's what we believe. We believe that through Jesus, yes, we get heaven later. But right now, we get power and purpose and comfort and guidance and a family of faith to lean on for the rest of our life, starting right now. You cannot earn the grace of God by your good works and you cannot lose it because of your bad ones. Otherwise, it would not be grace. No one is so good they don't need grace. No one is so bad they can't have it. But even in this very moment, the arms of Jesus Christ, the resurrected King, are open to you. For anyone who would reach up to him and stand on his gospel. That's what we believe. Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to Insight Church Online this glorious Sunday morning, friends. I want to say good morning, great morning. As always, God morning to you. That's our confession here on Insight Church Online, friends. It's a God morning, the day that the Lord created, and therefore we can rejoice and be glad in it, friends. Welcome to church. I hope you're ready to be changed, friends. Every time we gather, it's a life-changing, mind-renewing, faith-building time in God's Word, and today will be no exception. I want to encourage you to be thoughtful of someone special in your life, friends, someone that needs the Word of God. Go ahead right now, send a text message, send an email, friends. Uh, go ahead and make a phone call and let someone know, a friend, a family member, uh, a co-worker who needs encouragement to let them know that Insight Church Online is happening right now and they can be your guests, friends. You can be amazed, you'll be amazed at how God can change lives simply through an invitation. Uh, he's trying to reach people. He's trying to touch the hearts of people and he does so through our thoughtfulness and our invitation, friends. Also, go ahead and uh, hit the thumbs up button, friends. Like today's service, friends, in this YouTube digital space and the online space, digital discipleship is what I call it. Uh, you can help us to spread the word of God by copying the link and posting it on your social media platforms and get involved in the chat. Say hello. Let us know where you're from and uh, give God glory for the great things that he's doing in your life. Well, we're continuing here. We're going to give in a moment, but we're continuing this series on restoring biblical patriarchy. And I'm telling you, I'm just really thankful uh, for this teaching right now. When I see everything that's happening in our nation, friends, understanding the end times, understanding the purposes of God and how the kingdom of darkness is specifically attacking God's image and his likeness, marriage and family, God's purposes for people, his purpose for gender and human sexuality. Friends, this is the fight of our lifetime. And today's teaching is going to speak directly to the heart of the matter and also the spirit that is behind these issues. Friends, I know you're going to be blessed and equipped and informed about what's happening in society and how we can stand as the church of Jesus Christ. Friends, before we get into the word, let's honor the Lord in giving. Thank you so much for your partnership. Uh, you can go ahead and scan the QR code that you see there or text to give or visit our website 
at insightchurch.org or use your church app to give and invest. Uh, God's hand is upon our church. We're doing some amazing things and we can use your financial support, friends, your faithfulness uh, to continue to expand the mission and the vision of Insight Church. And speaking of this teaching on restoring biblical patriarchy, guys, please stay tuned for our strong men's conference that's coming up on November 1st to November 2nd of this year. We are going to uh, equip men to see the multi-generational blessing of God in your family, friends. We believe for a thousand generations. So stay tuned for our strong men's conference information and the announcement as well. Well, we're going to get into the teaching today. Right now is the time to declare your heart to be good soil for the seed of God's word, friends. I know you're going to be blessed. Take a look at this. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Oh, how we love your law. It is our meditation all the day and you through your commandments, you make us wiser than our enemies. We ask you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. We ask you that you would open the eyes of our understanding that we may comprehend the scriptures. Holy Spirit, we honor you uh, this morning. You are the spirit of truth. Uh, you are the spirit of wisdom. You are the one who is our comforter, our parakletos, who gives us the advantage in this life, the spirit of truth whom the world can't see and does not know. But we see you and we know you because you're not only with us, but you're in us. And we ask you this morning that you would increasingly form within each one of us the character of our Lord Jesus, that we can become more and more like him and that you would bring about the reality of his kingdom in our lives and through our lives to the world around us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody wholeheartedly said and agreed. Okay. All right. This morning, uh, teach for a short while here on restoring biblical patriarchy, restoring biblical patriarchy. Everybody say biblical patriarchy. We're not talking about this cultural stuff, but we're talking about the word of God. We're talking about that which is written. We're talking about um, God's creative order and what he intended and what he established from the very beginning concerning uh, the family and concerning his purposes, concerning the church. And so we're continuing on where we started on Father's Day with restoring biblical patriarchy. And I'm going to show you how this is um, this is not has really little to do with um, gender that is really about the end time purposes of God. I'm going to show you from the word of God that there's something about family and, and God's order in the home, uh, male, female, fathers, mothers, God's plan for families that is synonymous with his end time pur- purposes and nothing is under attack more in our society than family and what it is that God intends. And so we're going we're gonna to dig into that a little bit more. Before we start, take a look at this picture. I just wanted to see you this. Just, this is just a picture, um, just as a model, just, you know, families all over. I just show this um, to, to Sharon's father's credit, you know, the late, late Pastor Arthur's. Uh, he, he taught incessantly and communicated incessantly about the family, uh, the patriarchal family. I, I grew up in a wonderful home, wonderful Christian home, and an amazing family, thankfully, but I'd never heard of the patriarchal family growing up. I didn't, I didn't know what that was, but he taught until it really got in us in terms of uh, God's plan in, a, in an individualized culture, in a culture that seeks to isolate for us to live our own lives and do our own thing. That is not consistent with God's plan for family and his purposes in the earth. And so it's God's will um, to build families that are, that are connected so that God can reveal um, his purposes in and through those families. And, um, you know, it's, it's in our culture today, um, and I'm pretty strong with this, it, it needs to be said, just generally speaking to guys, for example, that you don't have to have eight different children by six different women. You don't have to. You don't have to. It's without without a vision, the people do what? So when we don't have even a vision for family and even a vision for fatherhood and motherhood and marriage and what God intends, 
just as we dedicated children today, when you don't have a vision for that, you're going to perish. And so we need, we need a vision. And it, it just needs to be a vision that we, you can have children by one woman. Somebody say amen. That's, I mean, that's, that's, you, can, you can do that. You can, you can, be, you can be faithfully married. We, a few weeks ago, man, we celebrated uh, uh, Brother Gene and Miss Gilda, 75 years of marriage. We need, a, we need a vision for that. And that doesn't mean that everything works out and everything is rosy and without challenge and there's not some hiccups along the way. But even so, at a minimum, we can teach our children and our grandchildren that they can get it right and they can walk in the blessing of God. We can teach them that. And, and where I'm going with this is not only can we teach them that, we are obligated to teach them that because if we don't teach them that, I keep telling you, the drag queen is going to teach them something different. <laughs> and we're going, we're, going, we're going to talk about that today, folks. This is, this is not a time to be passive at all concerning the purposes of God especially concerning his plans for our families. And so the backbone of family God's way is the patriarchal family model. And as God's plan, we'll see primarily to use men to lead their families. <laughs> I, I, am not, I am not one tenth of a percent intimidated by feminism. I'm telling you, man, I just, I just... Now, we'll, we'll get to it now. When, when men are, are living fully surrendered to Jesus and embody the love of God, man, you will send the women and the children around you into outer space. So it's nothing, it's nothing to be concerned about when we get it right. Now, sure, when men get it wrong, the damage is cataclysmic. I just show you that, the picture of the partnership that we have with all the guys that are incarcerated. You know what? They got it wrong, and the damage is exponential when you get it wrong. But when you get it right, it, it, it reveals a, a dispensation of God's grace and a representation of heaven that you can't see any other way. You can't see any other way unless a father, lowercase f, steps up to physically represent the Father, capital F, to say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. That's what this is about, restoring biblical patriarchy. When Jesus says, if you've seen me, you want to know what God in heaven has looked like? You want to, look, want to know what he's like? You know, want to know how God loves, how he cares for people? Want to know how kind he is? Want to know how good of a provider and a protector he is? Want to know how loving, how gracious, how wise, how compassionate God is? It's God's plan for every dad to be able to say, look at me. I'll give you an idea of what your father in heaven that you can't see is like through my example because I'm fully surrendered to him. Because I'm fully surrendered to him. Folks, that's, that's biblical patriarchy. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay, you still with me? Yes. <laughs> I, I talked about this, and we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, and I, this is just kind of hot off the presses, man. Two weeks ago, the, the God's um, Abrahamic strategy for family is three generations of men in alignment with the covenant purposes of God. That's, that's the, the, guys say Abrahamic strategy. Abrahamic. We're going to talk about that. The Abrahamic strategy that God has for family is three generations of men in line with the purposes of God. If you remember the last time I showed you the picture, we got that, I don't know if we have that picture there, maybe later on. I, I show you the picture of these three diesel locomotives that one diesel locomotive has 4,000 horsepower, can pull 100 cars or so. But then when you hook up the second diesel locomotive to the first diesel locomotive, and then you hook up another diesel locomotive 
to those two, I mean, you, you can pull your family for a thousand generations when the father, the son, and the grandson all get in alignment with the covenant purposes of God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the grandfather, the father, and the son. Come on, are you with me? Yes. Now, I'm not making this up. I'm telling you the, the word of God and what God has revealed that I think that this is an absolutely an end time message that the father, the grandfather, and the grandson can get together and say, let's have a meeting and let's get in covenant with each other and stand before the Lord and surrender ourselves to the Lord to determine that until Jesus comes, our lineage will always walk in the blessing of God and will always walk with the Lord. I'm telling you, the devil can't do anything with that. Ladies, we'll get to you. That doesn't mean that, that, ladies, you have an incredible role, a vital role. I'm just talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the strategy that God has given us for three generations coming into alignment with his covenant purposes. And, and as I said before, if we missed it, some of us, you know, we didn't know this. I didn't, I didn't hear this until I went to church and, you know, Sharon's dad started talking about some of it. Then I start going deeper and deeper and deeper in it. I get it. And whether it's for us, even for our, for our children, uh, we want the boys in this church uh, to know. How old is Jordan? Jordan's 12. Jordan's 12 years old. We want to we wanna make it so that Jordan knows I'm just a kid today. But one day, by God's grace, I'm going to be somebody's grandpa. We want all our men to know that for every one of us, at some point on the spectrum, you're either a, grand, a son, a dad, or a granddad. And we, we all need to be informed about the strategy that God has in terms of how to see to it that our lineage and our children would walk with the Lord all the days of their life. So we're going to teach this to the boys in children's church. Amen. They're going to be built different. Yes, sir. They're going to be built different. <laughs> they, I'm telling you, I give you, I give you my word by the grace of God. We're going to put something in them. They're going to be built differently. And they will be a force to be reckoned with, with the world. The devil will be afraid of them. Because we're going to, we're going to teach them God's word and teach them the strategy on how to break the curse and how to walk in the blessing of Abraham. Somebody say amen. Amen. (laughs) Ladies, you still with me? Okay, all right. Y'all should be cheering. and Y'all need to bring some pom-poms to church and y'all should be like... (laughs) Because this is not not to your expense or to your oppression. We're talking about setting you up so that you you don't feel like you got to do the man's job anymore. Ain't that what y'all want, ladies? Aren't, aren't, you, aren't you tired of carrying the load sometimes? And I'm not saying that the men in the church here are inactive. I'm just saying, generally speaking, it's time for the women to take a break. Yes. Yes. Time, time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have time to go deep today, but that, doesn't, it, doesn't it just do something when the guy says, babe, just take, just, I got this. You just take all. Let me, you know. Go get your nails done. Go get your toes done or whatever. I, I, I'm, I got it. You know, I'm taking care of this. That's what God intended. That's what God intended, man. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna raise up and reintroduce a new model for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his strategy. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay, let's, let me just kind of quickly go through some of this. I, have a, I, have a, I made a mistake the last time. Sometimes I see numbers while I'm preaching, and I said Proverbs 3, 5 is Proverbs 5, 3, and I was talking about the immoral woman and things like that. So let's, let's, let's start here and talking about the value in restoring biblical patriarchy. Let's just start here. Proverbs chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, it says here, my son, everybody say my son. My son. It says, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. So there's wisdom there for the son. Lend your ear to my what? There's understanding now. That's why we got to teach. That's why we call this insight church is to give understanding. So 
we're going we're to teach our families. We're going to teach our men. Part of our mission statement here as a church is building strong families. And so we're going to teach with wisdom and understanding. You're not, none of us are born knowing how to, do, how to do family. You don't catch it by osmosis. You can't get it by watching the Cosby Show reruns and My Three Sons. Wisdom to lead a family to be a godly husband, father, mother, wife, son, daughter. It takes wisdom. It takes understanding to do that. It takes understanding to do that. And truth of the matter, especially for those who, who get saved like I did, is like if, if you don't get some understanding, you, you'll bring your old dating, playboy, hustler kind of mindset into your marriage expecting to be blessed. You can't, you can't walk in the blessing of God as a family, as a husband and a wife with your single mindset. There's a lot of stuff we get exposed to, you know what I mean, that until we discharge some of that stuff and we, we develop a new mind, you can't expect to walk in the blessing of God. It's something that we need wisdom and we need understanding. Somebody say amen. amen. So it says here, verse, verse 2, that you may preserve discretion and your lips may keep knowledge, verse 3, 4, the lips of an immoral woman. Ooh, we're going to talk about this, man. This is, I get it, it goes all ways, but this is a specific in instance where the word of God, the Lord, is warning the young man to get wisdom and understanding and to watch out for the immoral woman. Women are predators too. Yes. Come on, we, we're going to get there. It's, it's going to take me a minute, man. We, we, we just, I, I feel like we just need to start a week conference today and just come back tonight and just. So, so listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to it. Keep that in mind, this immoral woman, because we're going to, we may touch on it here in a minute. We don't have a lot of time, but. I'm going to touch on, we're going to go to Revelation 2.20, how Jesus warned about the spirit of Jezebel in the church in the last days. It's a spirit. A woman by the name, a spirit named Jezebel. <laughs> and I'll get there. All of the, listen, I have, I can assure you with the fear of the Lord, I have nothing but, but the love of God in my heart for people. I, I, have, I have nothing but, but compassion for people. And so I'm not, I'm not here to, I don't need to attack, I wouldn't attack anybody. But the spirit of the age, the spirit of transgenderism is an attack on biblical fatherhood Amen. in the last days. And behind that spirit is Jezebel. Not throwing shade at anybody. I'm, I'm compassionate with anybody anywhere they are working out their own salvation with fear and trembling. I, I, have, I have no judgmental bone, but I'm going to tell you as a man who's not afraid and must maintain my integrity to stand on the truth of God's word, I'm going to preach the truth and let folks deal with it. And how you deal with it, that's not my deal. That's not my deal. But how shall they hear without a preacher? There's a spirit behind what's happening in our nation today. And we're going we're gonna to deal with it. Somebody say amen. amen. So watch out for this immoral woman. Watch this. Her lips, they drip honey. Her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Isn't that interesting? The Bible also talks about the word as a two-edged sword. And say that this woman... It's kind of like a two-edged sword here. Powerful. Verse 5, her feet go down to what? And her steps lay hold of what? So that spirit on this immoral woman takes, takes men intense. Her destination and her outcome for men of God and men in general is death and hell. That's her destination. And I'm telling you, I, I get it, guys. It's, it's man, our, our, our five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old boys, 
you know, they, they kind of 10 years old. They, they need a cell phone now. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a safety issue now. It's just, just being in contact. They need a cell phone. But there are apps by the thousands. There are folks on social media by the millions who carry that immoral spirit looking to prey on them. And we've got we to build them differently. We've got we to build them differently. We can't, we can't insulate our kids and just coddle our kids anymore. As a matter of fact, that's a disservice now because you really lack the fortitude to deal with anything outside of children's church. <laughs> you do good on Sundays in children's church, and then you get to school on Monday and somebody tease you and something happens like that, and then you just like, you know, you collapse. We got we to build different and stronger children today. We got to build something different in them. We got to build something different in them. I like to say like Daniel and his friends. That's our vision for our children's church is to build kids like Daniel and his friends. That's it. But she's, she's predatory in nature to take, take, take them to death and to take them down to hell. Verse 6, lest you uh, ponder her path uh, of life. Her ways are unstable. You do not know them. Therefore, hear me now, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others. That's how a guy loses honor. And then you even give, give your years, your productivity, your vision, purpose, calling. You give all that stuff to the cruel one, to the enemy. You just hand your life over to the enemy when guys get mixed up with immoral women. Verse 10, lest aliens be filled with your wealth and your labors. Normally you poverty, you broke, you don't got no money. You know, you're paying 20000 a month in child support. And it's it just, I'm telling you, this stuff, it just, it just cycles and that ends up being destructive. It's right here in the word of God. Verse 10, and you mourn at last, then when your flesh and your body are consumed, it's destructive. And say, how have I hated instruction? My heart despised correction, didn't want to listen. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. So you see a picture now. Of, of this immoral spirit that targets and desires to destroy men, and it's happening all, all the time. You know, biblical, I, I have to distinguish that biblical femininity is different than cultural femininity. So ladies, as women of God, your goal is to aspire to biblical femininity, not cultural femininity. Don't sign on to this feminist woke nonsense that's coming from the campuses, that's coming from Hollywood, that's coming from the socialites, you ain't them. You ain't them. They can't teach you anything. They can't teach you anything. And um, just do yourself a favor. Um, you don't need to keep up with the Kardashians. And I'm not hating on the Kardashians. I'm just telling you, they are not your example. They are not your role model. If you listen to them and your life is patterned and followed after them, you will pick up their values and their attitudes and their ideologies. We should not be into the things of the world. I'm no shade. I don't know if Beyonce is not your role model. Come on. Find some godly moms and grandmas in the church. You got Pastor Sharon. You got elders in the church. Change your vision and change the people that you're aspiring to be like, be like if you want to walk in the ways of God. Amen. And I'm going I'm to I'm gonna get to I got so much to cover. I'm going to get to it. And we'll see one of the first things that God would tell his people whenever they went into a new territory, went into the land before God could establish covenant with them, before they could build an altar to the Lord. He told them, tear down the altars of Baal. Come on, folks. Before they could build an altar to the Lord to enter into covenant relationship with God, to walk in his blessing, the first thing God tells them, tear down the altars of Baal. Amen. So if you want to know why I'm teaching this stuff, we're tearing down some altars Amen. of Baal. Yes. We're going to tear some stuff down. We're going to tear it down. Come on, come on, come on. You cast down strongholds, right? That's what the word of God tells us. That's why the Lord gives us the weapons of our, for, our, 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 our are not carnal, but they're mighty into God. We got some strongholds to pull down. 
We got some altars of Baal and some idols that have been erected that have to be torn down because God wants to build an altar to bring you into a fresh place of covenant. So that he can perpetuate his blessing in your family and in your lineage, lineage for a thousand generations. So we first got to uproot. That's Jeremiah 1. Uproot. Tear down. Pluck up. I believe for what it is that God is calling us to do, it's time to tear some stuff up in our life. We got we to gotta get rid of some stuff. We got to tear some things down and dislodge some things. Somebody say amen. amen. All righty. We need, a, we need a fresh ideology, you know. I mean, this can't have godly family. We're just clubbing ways. <laughs> you know, I used to club and do, come on, we got we to, gotta... are you hearing me? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Young girls can, can twerk, but nobody, nobody told you to cook and fold laundry. Now, I'm not saying it's only the woman's job to cook and fold laundry. But the word of God says that the older women in the church teach the young women to be homemakers. We'll see it. Well, somebody taught you to twerk, but you don't know how to fold underwear. Come on, fold. I, I know. I, come on. You don't, you don't have to take the blessing if you don't want it. Receive my instruction from the word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, man. There's a way to fold a t-shirt. Get the sleeves in the back. And... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being demeaning. I'm talking about the blessing. I'm talking, I'm talking about the blessing. Are you with me? Yes. <laughs> Proverbs 5, 18. <laughs> it says, um, let, your, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. It's speaking to that same young man to get wisdom and to get understanding. Avoid, run away from the immoral woman. But then run toward a wife. And I might need to hang out there for a minute next time. Run away from the immoral woman, but run toward your wife. That getting married is part of your protection. And we'll talk about that. You rejoice, you rejoice in your in your wife. Ladies, say amen. amen. And as I said before, everything doesn't have to be perfect, man. Come out of that stuff that you got to get this kind of house and I got to be making so much money. Come, no, forget that. Knock all that. You know, when you, when you find a woman of God and you know the Lord is in it and her family's good, her family ain't crazy and your family ain't crazy. <laughs> you know what? I mean, come on. You checking. I, yeah. I won't say that, but. I'll just say when you checked everybody out enough. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I was going to say. But, but when you sense God is in it, just, man, it's God. You don't, have, you don't have to be concerned. You don't have to be reserved. It's a godly thing. It's God's plan. Rejoice in the wife of your, your youth. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 20. It says here, For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress. Proverbs 14.1, we'll just look at a few of these today. Proverbs 14.1, it says here that the wise woman, ladies say wise woman. woman. The wise woman does what? Builds her house. So I I wasn't just being, you know, cynical talking about laundry and homemaking and things. And you're not hearing me saying like that's the woman's, I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that there's a, there's a homemaking, we'll see it in Titus chapter 2, that the Bible says when a woman is wise, you learn, you learn how to build your house and take care of the environment. Like that's, you just, you just kind of step up and say, man, I just, 
there's a certain atmosphere. There's a culture that I want here. There's a certain environment, you know, spiritually and relationally. And there's the, the love of God is here. There's, there's kindness and compassion. Like, yes, ladies, you are anointed to create that environment and to build your house. Yes. Amen. And it says a foolish woman, she just tears it down. She just keeps, keeps tearing it down. And this has everything to do with the plans and the purposes of God. Building the house, homemakers, older women teaching the younger, younger women. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Remember I said before we were talking about the immoral woman in Proverbs chapter 5. Listen at this, Revelation 2.20. Now this is, this is end time teaching. From the book of Revelation, this is concerning the end time, and Jesus is speaking. Letters to the churches, letter to the church of the corrupt church, the letter of Thyatira. This is an end time message from the Lord to the church. Let's listen at what he says as one of the characteristics of the church in the last days which we're living in. Revelation chapter 2.20, Jesus says this, Nevertheless, I, Jesus, have a few things against you because you allow, or in other words, you permit it, you were passive, you were indifferent, you were politically correct, you didn't want to offend anybody, you allowed, he says here, because you allow that woman, Jezebel. So Jesus says to the church, this is my problem with you. You allowed or tolerated or permitted that woman, that spirit, Jezebel. You know, I'm teaching like this because I ain't go allow. I'm, I ain't going to allow it. <laughs> I, I, I ain't allowing it. And that's not to say that it's operating anywhere. anywhere. I'm just, I, we're not going to allow it. And we're not going to allow it for our children or our grandchildren or our great grandchildren. We're not. We're not going. We're just not going to allow it, man. I, I, and maybe you picked up by now. That's there's one fight that I love to fight. It's a spirit of Jezebel, man. I, I man, I that's. I just feel anointed for that one. I really do. I really do. Because I get it, and I understand God's model. I understand how covenant works. I understand creative order. I understand truth. I understand the nature of God. And I know that spirit exists to undermine the purposes of God and to destroy biblical masculinity. I know it. I get it. So we ain't allowing it. Me and my bad grammar. <laughs> Jesus says, you allow it. That woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess, deep, spiritual, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things offered to idols. Verse 21, and I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Very important, because she can't repent. That spirit can't repent, or people who have been exposed to it can't, re can't repent unless the truth is spoken and the gospel is preached to give them opportunity to repent. Yes. So, so how it's God's will that all should repent. So even, yes. even for folks who have been affected by and succumbed to and influenced by the spirit of Jezebel, the Lord is still extending an opportunity for repentance. But you can't repent if nobody has the guts to step up and tell the truth so that you know what you can repent from. Yes. So that's why we can't be sheepish and be all politically correct. Well, we ain't going to talk about that. Folks can't repent and change when the truth hasn't been spoken. In love. With compassion and tenderness and respect. But the truth has to be spoken to give folks an opportunity to say, man, I got to change. I got to repent. And believe so that the kingdom of heaven can operate. Amen? So he says he desired for her to repent. Verse 22, indeed, I would cast her into a sick bed. And those who commit adultery with her into the great tribulation, unless they repent 
of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the mind, the minds and the hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine. Everybody say doctrine. doctrine. We're going to come back to that as well. Who do not know the depths of who? So it starts out as that woman Jezebel. But then Jesus is talking now, folks. This is the son of God communicating to the church. He goes deeper and says behind that spirit of Jezebel is the depths of Satan. He says the devil is behind it. The enemy of God. The adversary is behind that spirit of sexual immorality that's even operating in some of the churches. Jesus says you permitted it, you allowed it, and not only that spirit operating in the churches is all over the culture, it's in the White House, I'm coming for the White House too, it's there, it's in Congress, it's all over. It's all over. And Jesus says it's the depths of who? Satan. Satan's work. We're going to talk about that. It says, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I would give, big deal, power over, get this. Can you see how this thing is now escalating? He's talking to the church, and I, I got to dial this down. He's talking to the church about a Jezebel spirit of immorality that was permitted and allowed to operate. But then he says, it's the depths of Satan. And because you did not overcome it, you are subject to the nation. But if you overcome it, he says, I'm going to give you power over the nations. Oh, folks. That's why I say I have no use for politics. I already have power over the nations. Are you, can you see why America is in the condition that it is in? It's because the church is in the condition that it is in. He says, I'll give, you, I'll give you power over the nations. I'll give you power. Let me say it this way. Power over the White House. Power over Congress, the UN. Power to advance the kingdom of God. But it's, but it's, it's not accessible and we're not, we can't operate in that level of authority because this, this Jezebel spirit of immorality is there and it's looking to take out fathers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I just want you to see this video. I'm gonna, I, I got a long way to go. You guys all right with this? Yes. <sighs> I, I know. Just uh, I'll talk in a minute. For, before we get to the video, look at this picture. You got the child grooming picture. This, this is uh, these are just some images of child grooming, man. Pastor Sharon and I being in the media space, we deal with a lot of stuff right now. And uh, I, just, I just want you to see the spirit of Jezebel at work that, you know, Netflix, all these shows, all these platforms, drag tots, drag tots, the bottom left corner there, is, is, is that little girl too? Maybe. I, I don't know. A year and a half. I don't know. Folks, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just showing this because here we are. Here we are. Spirit of Jezebel, sexual immorality, has nothing to do with Democrat or Republican. There's a, there's a spirit behind this that the church is supposed to deal with. If I, don't, if I don't fight for nobody else, I'm going to do it for our kids and our grandkids. Man, I'm not going to be some old deadbeat dad, deadbeat pastor, Amen. weak, feckless 
poor excuse of a man. Not here. Nah, not here. We don't do that. Not here. We're all man here at Inside Church. We don't apologize. That's just, that's just, we just have a job to do. We have an assignment on behalf of the Lord. Two minutes. Take a look at this video. It's two minutes long. Then I'll wrap up. <laughs> beyond our community to other marginalized groups and we need to remind everybody how important voting is uh, because it lifts everybody up. Hey everyone, to the White House, I'd like to briefly answer some questions. Go ahead, I'm ready. Kick in. Oh, yes. Is it true that it's all your natural hair? Yes, I can confirm that this is not a wig. Follow up question, do you use your own products? I do use Jake and hair. She exclusively broke it over here. The other day today to honor the extraordinary, and I'm not being solicitous, the extraordinary courage and contribution of the LGBTQ community to celebrate their legacy and their progress. We welcome to the largest Pride Month celebration ever held at the White House, but just the beginning. So today, I want to send a message to the entire community, especially to transgender children. You are loved. You are heard, you are understood, and you belong. And as I made clear, including in my State of the Union address, your president, my entire administration, has your back. So, I, I have I have no use for anybody's politics. That is the spirit of Jezebel and the depth of Satan in our nation. I I I respect and I empathize with anybody where they are working out whatever they need to work out. That is not my place. But with the love of God, the truth of God must be spoken for our nation to come to repentance yes. Thank you. and for the bondage to be broken to Satan's lordship over this nation. I, I assure you, this movement will not rest until it sits behind the resolute desk in the over office to exercise authority over this nation and the nations of the world. Last thing I'll tell you is this, and we'll talk about it. There's, there's a few things that are, that are important in this process. This, the, the, elect, the debate that happened this week, let me just give you a bigger, bigger picture about what's going on, folks. There's, there's a few things. Number one, principles. This, this book gives us principles. Everybody say principles. principles. This book gives us principles from God. The blessing. I just showed you the picture of George Washington placing his hand on this book, on the principles that come from God, swearing and dedicating this nation to God as best we can according to these principles. If we don't keep those principles... Eventually, political parties want to change those principles to become policies. So whichever, whichever principles, I told you, I-80, east, west, left and right, there's just two directions. Political parties have adopted a set of principles, some that are in line with God's word, 
and a whole lot that are not in line with God's word. Their objective and the whole point of a political party, lobbyists, and the things that they do is to turn principles into policies. And the danger is when, when policies are established, it is really, really, really difficult to undo and to reverse those policies. And once those policies are established, it now brings sin into our nation to be normalized as a way of life. And once those policies have been established based upon their principles, now our court systems will litigate and adjudicate and judge cases based upon the policies, based upon the ungodly principles. And they enshrine into law sin and something that God calls an abomination. And in many situations, we fall for the distraction of trying to figure out which, president, which presidential candidate we like the best. I don't like this one. I don't like this one. Let me tell you something. The way our government set up, at best, a presidential personality is, is only four to eight years. Policies continue for a long time. Why, why am I saying this? May God give us the wisdom as the church to rise up, to keep standing and preaching for the principles of God's word and sending out leaders and missionaries and people that have the heart of God to contend for righteous policies so that Christ will be honored in these United States of America. That's my 4th of July message right there. That's my Independence Day America. Independence Day. You know, friends, I highly encourage you to prayerfully study today's teaching over and over again. I just want to say that as we're teaching on these very delicate and very sensitive matters, uh, Pastor Sharon and I have deep love and empathy and compassion in our hearts for all people, friends. Every individual is made and created in the image and the likeness of God. But that image and that likeness must be recreated by being born again through faith in Jesus Christ and we must then be filled with the Holy Spirit of God to empower us to be that Jesus died for us to be. Isn't it ironic that in the day when so many people are struggling with their identity and struggling with the gender dysphoria, that Jesus came. That's the very thing that Jesus came to resolve is our identity for us to know that we've been created in God's image and likeness and we've been conformed, friends, predestined to be conformed to the image of God's son. Jesus came to solve the identity in, in uh, issue for every human being. Friends, that is the motive of our prayer. That is why we share the truth of God's word the way that we do. But behind these ideologies, friends, are powerful demonic forces. And only the church of Jesus Christ, friends, operates with the revelation to see truth, to understand what's happening in the spiritual world, and then to resist the powers of darkness and to see the kingdom of heaven uh, friends, take root and be established in the hearts of people. That is our prayer. It is our desire that many, many people would repent from their own ways, their own ideas, their own identity and surrender and give their lives to Christ, friends, to receive the fullness of the blessing that Christ came to bring. Friends, thanks for your prayers and your support, friends. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but there are many, many spiritual forces that are seeking to destroy our nation during this time. But we are standing firm to declare that Jesus is Lord of America. Thank you for your partnership and giving, friends. Go ahead and support. Scan the QR code, text to give, visit our website, or use your church app, friends, uh, to bring your tithe and your offering before the Lord. It strengthens our church, and it's an act of worship unto the Lord. Thank you so much for your par financial partnership here at Insight Church, friends. Before we go, I just want to speak the blessing of God over you by saying the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, friends, and give you his peace. Always remember that Jesus loves you. Pastor Sharon and I love you. Be well, be encouraged. See you next time.